Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat. The username is the Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs, the weather, or the gym. Hi there, a very warm welcome to the Racing Post Weekend Postcast. I'm Bruce Millington, and I'm delighted to be joined this week by Tom Park from the Racing Post, the international racing expert Brendan Duke, who has finally located his headphones from his man bag and is ready, full of winners, I hope, and certainly wit. And from Paddy Power, we've got Tom Nugent. So, what have we got on Saturday? We've got seven races on ITV4 from York, from Sand and from Chester. They are really fascinating races. If it's quality you want, you're better off with the World Cup and the rugby and everything else that's going on. But if you want really interesting races, this is the place to be. They're really, really good heats. Tom Park's already said he's sussed some. Hopefully the boys over in Ireland have as well. Then we will be looking ahead to Sunday where we've got classic action at Shanti with the Prix de Diane. And we're also going to look ahead to Royal Ascot, which is obviously only days away. So we will start then at York where the ITV cameras are, four races there, and we kick off with the 150. It's the Queen Mother's Handicap Cup. It's, uh, a, it's for female amateur riders, and Paddy Powell's latest betting is as follows, Tom. Yeah, Pacify is our four to one favourite. Desert Ruler next in five, six to one Star of the East alongside Mucky Yam, seven to one Archie Pops, nine to one Bar. Now, I don't want to tell you who to tip Tom Park because you are the expert, I am a mug, but you've got the best female rider and the best trainer teaming up, haven't you? Rafe Beckett and Serena Brotherton. What more do you want? Well, you, you say that, but um, I, I like Mukayam. Um, he, he was second in this race last year, um, and I've just got a funny feeling that Easterby is pitching this one up for Emily again. Um, after that race last year, he won two of his next three starts, so he was clearly well handicapped on the day, and he's got him down to a mark of 86 from 94. So I think he's probably had this race in mind for some time. Um, he ran well at Chester last time, um, and I don't think he'll be far away again, actually. OK. Brendan, this is your sort of race, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I thought it was very tough, but I'm delighted to see the wisdom of crowds angle that I uh, agree with Tom. Um, basically not much to add. He's a horse who takes a few runs usually to get uh, to, to hit top form. He's had a few runs and I think he's bound to go close. OK, do we get three votes, Tom, or are you going for something else? No, sadly not. Uh, I, I thought Star of the East ha had a chance here as a consistent enough so sort, although is off a career high mark now of 93. And um, There's an argument that uh, it just didn't handle the track in Epsom the last day, but I think, still think can be competitive here and 6-1 to one is fair. OK, we're off and running. The 225s, the JC be handicapped. How do Paddy Power bet on this one, Tom? Um, if my computer would comply, I'll be able to give you the prices straight away. Spanish City is our five to two favourite. Golden Apollo next in seven to one, alongside Get Knotted. Eight to one Squats and Feathered Nest. Twelve to one Salatine and Muntadab and Gallipoli. And it's fourteen to one by those. Brendan, these are tough races, aren't they? They are tough races, and I suppose putting up a 5-2 to two shot in a 14-runner race isn't very imaginative, but I thought this favourite was very hard to get away from. Uh, progressive horse, still lightly raced. The Victoria Cup was strong form. He beat two horses the last day who are potentially very well handicapped. He wants a strong pace to run at. There's enough pace here. He should get some cover. I think he's, I think he's still well handicapped, and it'd be hard to beat. And, and uh, Brennan, will you be strapping on the betting boots big time this weekend or keeping the old powder dry? I think I'll be keeping the powder relatively dry. York is not a particularly happy hunting ground for me and uh, we don't want to uh, jeopardise the capital for next week. How is the capital for next week? Oh, no, 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 the right day in Leopardstown yesterday, actually. Oh, so, uh, yeah, it, uh, things uh, late, late May, early June has been a, a really good spell for me. So, yeah, going well. So you're going in there banging form. Well, we'll get your Royal Ascot tips later. But first of all, we'll deal with the Saturday fair. And Parky, who wins the 225 at York? I have a bit of a love affair with Get Knotted. Um, I love this horse. Um, he, he's brilliant at York. Uh, I think he's, he's won twice, I think, in nine starts. He's been placed on three other occasions. All of them place and wins have come over seven furlongs. Uh, he was sent off favourite last year and he did run a bit of a stinker, but he won next time out. Um, I just love the way he travels. Um, I get what Brendan was saying about the, the favourite. I think that he'll be very tough to beat, but you know, I'm, I do like this horse. He was dropped a pound for finishing a length behind Gilgamesh last time. Gilgamesh is a good horse. Um, and look, I'm convinced that Michael Dodds has been wanting to win the Air Gold Cup with this horse. He's missed out on the handicap a couple of times. Um, 
I think he'll probably be going there again this year. Whether he has the speed for six furlongs, I'm not sure, but seven furlongs at York looks looks perfect. I think he'll go well, yeah. Get knotted for Parky. Who for Tom Nugent? Uh, um Spanish City has a very look at interesting profile, but he only won a class three handicap by a head the last day. This is a class two. Now he's very interesting profile. I agree with Brendan there. He's very stop start to career to date, but he's probably better than 91. But the one I'd go for each way, you're getting the four places here with Paddy Powers, probably the feathered nest for me. Um, I thought she could still be competitive off of 89 after two decent runs in Chester the last twice. Okay, if there is such a thing as a quality heat tomorrow, it's probably the three o'clock, it's the sky. I bet Grand Cup. It's a listed race, and what's the latest betting, Tom? Yeah, weekender tops the betting for us at the moment at two to one. Marmelo nine to four, and six to one. Time to time to study eight to one bar. And Tom will stick with you. Who wins? A uh, be really, really big fan of Marmelo here, and I think. The, who am I to knock the Paddy Power Traders? But I think they might have the wrong favourite here. Um, I absolutely, absolutely love the uh, Marmelo, who's second to Vizirabad, um, one of the great French stairs in uh, in France the last time. And uh, I think he's developing still nicely. He's only a five year old, and I think he could develop into a real top class there. I think he's better than a listed horse. I think he's better than these, and I think nine to four is more than fair. Will you get the old dirty look in that nice canteen in Power Towers if you see a trade? <laughs> oh, like, Frank Hickey will probably throw a plate across the canteen at me. Yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't do that, Frank. He's a placid man, isn't he? Uh, Parky, who do you think will win this? Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, I think I, I can't believe my mellow's so big. I had him down as an even money shot. Wow. Um, his form's miles better than Weekender. Even if Weekender puts that Sandown run aside, I still think Marmelo's miles better, but Weekender pulls too hard in his races. Um, he, my, he was second to Vizirabad, yes. Um, he's beaten a horse called Desert Skyline, who Paul Keeley fancies for the Gold Cup at Ascot. Um, he's beaten a Group 1 winner in Batil. He was second to Talismanic. This is a really good horse running in listed company. And I can't believe that he's not favourite, never mind as big as 94. I, I think he's an even money shot at best. Oh, yeah. right. Is there, I don't, will there be World Cup football taking place at three o'clock? I'm just trying, I can't think of the time. No, there won't. No, it'd be free, yeah. So we can certainly, between games two and three tomorrow, we can turn over and lump on Marmelo, particularly if Brendan endorses what the other lads have said. Yes, ringing endorsement. Uh, couldn't agree more with the lads. Think he should be favourite. As Tom said, for a five year old, he's still relatively unexposed, he's only had 12 runs. I just trust his rating more than Weekender. I, got, I was very impressed with Weekender at Chelmsford, but I think I may have overrated that form as the official handicapper has. And I think Marmelo's rating is rock solid and he's the best horse in the race. Excellent stuff, lads. Well done. The 335 at York, the final televised race is the Pavers Foundation Catherine Memorial Sprint Handicap. Another wide open affair, Tom Nugent. Yeah, five places here, Bruce. Foxtrot Lady is our 6-1 to one favourite. Bessie Ear is 7-1. to one. Commander Han, 8-1. to one. Alongside Joel and Citroen Major, 10 to 1. Gabriel the Saint and 14 to 1 bar those. Coming in, Parky, lead on. Uh, I like Best Sire. Um, William Haggis always has winners at York. Um, I get why Foxtrot Lady's favourite. She looks like she's progressing. Interestingly, she's the horse that equilateral beat by 12 lengths at Doncaster a few Ooh, starts ago. We need a ago. bit of franking then, don't we? Yeah. Um, but yeah, Best Sire was sent off 6 to 4 favourite in a listed race last time. Nothing went to plan. Um, she raced far too keenly and a race was lost by halfway um, and I think that I think that she, she's the one to beat to be honest I think down the betting Zap is interesting I was at York the day he ran a couple of starts ago he was third that day and I think Richard Fahey is putting first time blinkers on him this time so yeah I mean Fahey is another that always has winners at York so I, I like to stick with him and Haggis if I can. Yeah. Jolly good thank you Parky. T um, Brennan Duke who's your fancy here? I like Foxtrot Lady, actually. Um, interestingly, she's trying to avenge the defeat of her half-sister, uh, Dancing Star, in this a couple of years ago. She finished second. Really good family. Uh, sl maybe a slight concern. She's done the hokey-cokey on her last two runs. She went right in Chester, and then she went left in Carlisle. And she did flash her tail in Chester, but she's a really good head character. I think she's perfectly honest. And she travelled like a right good filly the last day in Carlisle. Just travelled all over them. Uh, the Dancing Star got up to 108. It wouldn't be the biggest shock in the world if this filly was capable of getting to something closer. And I think she'll win tomorrow. Thank you, Brendan. Tom Nugent. 
uh, thought consequences was interesting be very very interested to see if there's a few quid for it tomorrow uh, a 14 to 1 shot at the moment um, each way back up to 6 furlongs I think will suit and a very workable mark uh, of 88 so consequences for me each way let's do the other three ITV4 races next success ain't earned it's bought that's why at Paddy Power we paid the big bucks for the best tech nerds in the world to develop our new fastest ever app Download the new app from the App Store or Play Store now. 18plusbegumbleaware.org OK, welcome back. Three more races on Saturday on ITV4 to cover for you. First of all, we'll do the 205 at Sandown. It's the Randox Health Scurry Stakes. A good old burn up up that weird home straight of the other uh, weird five furlong straight of theirs. And Parky, who's your fancy for this one? I think it's an interesting race. I, I like Sound and Silence. Um, he's blinkered for the first time. He was a really good horse last year. Um, just beating ahead at the Breeders' Cup. Um, but he's lost his way on his last few starts. Um, he has a penalty to shoulder, which isn't going to help. Um, but I just get a feeling that if them blinkers do the trick and he re if he gets back to form, then he should be good enough to beat these. Um, but he, he, is, he, he does need to, to improve because he's been pretty poor on his last few starts. But I'm just, he, he was 12 to 1 earlier in the week, so I'm a bit annoyed that I didn't take the price then. Um, but I think he's around 6 to 1, 11 to 2. So, yeah, I'd, I'd give him another chance. OK, Brendan, who do you like? Yeah, it's a, tr it's a very tricky race. It's interesting for a five furlong sprint, there's not a whole lot of pace in it. Uh, Cody Time, the favourite, has a poor draw. The, 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 the Hadaf uh, is also poorly drawn, but he has the Doyler, and I don't think the lack of pace will be lost on the Doyler, thinking man's jockey. And even from seven, I think he, if he jumps him out in front, there's not much competition for the lead. He could get over and bag the rail. He's already beaten Spoof over course and distance. And uh, he's, he's around third, five, around four to one, nine to two. I thought he was a fair price. A very cunning case you make there. And Tom, who's your fancy? Yeah, nowhere near as insightful as the lads, sadly. But uh, Cody time was the one for me. Just think he's progressive. Now, not sure what price he will go off. He's a, if he's around three to one, I think he's a bet. If he's shorter, he's not. But the, he's got that wide draw to overcome. But Cody time was the one for me at first look. OK, let's switch to Chester, the 240. It's the City of London handicap. Brennan Duke, you go first. Um, the 240. Oh, yes, Austrian school. Uh, I had a very disappointing experience in Doncaster last day. The clerk of the course did not cover himself in glory. I backed Austrian school, and they basically changed the going after the first race from fast to heavy or something and i don't i don't think he i don't think he enjoyed he enjoyed that uh he's got a big class edge here uh i imagine that uh, mcdonald will want to get him out in front because the only concerns are the trip and chester but i think if he gets him out in front there's nothing really here wants to make the lead i think he can boss it from the front it'll be very hard to pass and tom nugent who's your selection uh, I quite like Shahood here. He was well tried over a mile, uh, but didn't really work out for him. He stepped up to 10 furlongs then, and it uh, was a completely different horse. I think 12 will even bring out more improvement. Um, he gets the first time hood, and whilst his official rating of 83 doesn't give him anywhere near of a chance uh, compared to Austrian school off 93, his racing post rating would give him a squeak, and I think he'll have a good chance. Uh, interesting to see what price he would go off, although, b uh, bear in mind, there's only going to be seven runners here, so your each-way terms will be affected. Oh, dear. Parky? Uh, I like Istanbul, Istanbul Sultan. Um, he showed a nice turn of foot at Weatherby, I thought. Um, he put... He was beaten in the end, but he, he put three lengths um, in the last couple of furlongs between himself and the winner. They drew a long way clear of the third, um, and I think there could be a bit more. He's drawn one, which is ideal at Chester, so yeah, I think there could be a bit more to come from him. OK, and a final TV race on Saturday. Back to Sandown, 3.15, Randox Health Handicap. Tom Nugent, you can bat first. Um, hoping that Salt Whistle Bay uh, can continue uh, his progression. Um, Last six runs, he's gone up £21, which is enough weight, but he got £3 the last day, uh, only being beaten a short head. Look at when you get these horses hitting the frame and those uh, kind of handicaps over a mile, they're in go rich vein reform. That's half the battle. I think he's a chance to keep progress with Salt Whistle Bay. Uh, interesting to see what price he goes off each way. OK, Dukey. Well, there's an interesting one here at a price, Bruce. The Manson. Uh, who was fifth in this last year off a three pound higher mark and the secret to this horse well he certainly some of his best runs have come when fresh and at sandown lo and behold he makes a seasonal debut at sandown tomorrow ah. and he's 16 to 1 uh, so 
Yeah, three pound lower than the, than the race last year. I'm fairly sure last year's race was a stronger renewal. I thought sixteen to one at a big price each way. Give us his name again in case anyone's ears pricked up and they didn't quite catch it. Manson. Okay, Parky, what's your view here? Yeah, I like Salt Sea Whistle. Um, he beat a horse called Rip Off, who went on to win the Victoria Cup a couple of starts ago. Won the Victoria Cup quite snugly, actually. Um, he all but won in on his next start, beating just a short head. Um, he's got Andrea Azzini in the saddle, and he's improving. And I think, I think, yeah, he's a good, good price around the seven to one mark. Well done, lads. Let's hoover up your fancies from elsewhere on Saturday. Don't give you an app away just yet, though. We're at Sandown, we're at Chester, we're at Bath, we're at Hexham, we're at Downpatrick, Limerick, Fontwell, and Leicester. Goodness me! Thank God David Jennings isn't on duty. We'd never ever finish. Uh, Parker, you go first. Yeah, I like, I've been waiting for one to come out. It's actually at York in the 440 at York called Rathbone. Um, I was at I was at York on Missadora Day when that ran in its first it run first time out maiden, um, and he, we got wind that he was Kevin Ryan's best juvenile that week. Now, that was the first day of the meeting, and he ran up the middle of the track when there was a golden highway up the stands rail. Um, he finished third, but he absolutely thumped everything that ran on his side. Um, I think that form was good enough anyway, and he'd have won that race pretty comfortably, I think, um, if he'd have been up the stands rail. Um, and yeah, I've, I've been waiting for him to come out. I'm not sure what price he's going to be. If he is odds against... I'll be I'll be piling on. You'll be smashing him up. Yeah, Brendan, what you like at picking a, a an English accent? Can you tell where Tom Park's from? Um, he's northern, I'll wager. Yeah, but I need a little. I need you to be a little bit more specific than that. Um, okay, uh, can, can you come back to me? I, I want to have one more listen. I, yeah, I, I, we'll I think. Do I, that. I, I think yeah, okay. okay. Right, uh, Brendan, have you got anything in your roundup that we need? Just the one, um, there's a Dermot Well trained filly in the 510 in Limerick tomorrow called Hasamaya. Uh, conclusion will probably head the, head the market here, but she's got a few convictions at, at, at this stage. Uh, this is a good looking filly, this Hasamaya by Shammerdal. Um, I saw her in the Curra on deep ground and she travelled pretty well in that race. I think she just floundered on the ground. She should improve and I. I think she'll take a fair step up tomorrow and, and go close. Okay, and Tom Nugent, what have you got yeah, for me? Five ten Limerick as well. Hasamaya really, Ooh. really liked her uh, cur run on ground that she wouldn't have liked at all, and she'll take a good step forward on better ground. I think she's a right chance. The other one in four o'clock in Limerick as well. Um, I haven't seen who Joseph O'Brien has jacked up on Penda Snap yet, but. Um, it is a horse on the up and up the whole time, and I'd be very interested to see if there's a claimer booked uh, just to take a little bit of weight off its back. But a horse in a rich vein of form, Penda Snap, in the four o'clock in Limerick and 510, Hasamaya. Good work. Now, then, if you listen to the US Open Golf Postcast this week, you'll have heard Steve Palmer doing an extraordinary new remix of This Will Not mm. Be Beaten. I I've got to be honest, it was very funny the way he sang it, but I didn't really like it that much. But anyway, it was absolutely, you've got to watch it. There is, there is a clip mm. of it going out on Twitter. But I presume, uh, producer Adam, we're getting the standard version now. This will not be beaten. Excellent. Right, Tom Park, away you go and, and give us a lay it on thick your accent so Brennan can tell where you're from. I think that 9 to 4 about Marmelo is the best nine to four shot I've seen for some time and I will be absolutely piling on to give me some good money for Ascot next week. And which race and which Three o'clock York. Three o'clock York. Right then, Brendan, where's he from? Cumbria. No. He's a Mackham. Ah. He's, he's a, he's a I'm Sunderland I'm, I'm actually from County Durham. So oh, County Durham? Yeah, oh, Darlington right. I'm from. So. Oh, Darlington. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, we don't need the exact postcode. Well. But anyway. <laughs> 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 yeah. he's a, That's he's relatively close to Cumbria though, isn't it? Uh, well, reasonably so, but it's a very, very Wrong different end of the country. Get the map and the ruler out, Brendan. No, no. You've been done out of the money here. The, the Sunderland, <laughs> people from the Sunderland area are called Mackhams because they're like a Macca cake. That's how they speak. So anyway, Parky's a Mackham. Brendan, what's your nap? I like, uh, I'll go with Austrian school in the 240 at Chester. Lovely. And uh, Thomas? Three bells, York, Marmello, all in. Oh, great. <laughs> I've got no problem with two people napping the same one. You're very strong on that one, so I think that is the big takeout from today. Let's look at Sunday next. Check out Paddy's Rewards Club. Simply place five bets of £10 or more across any sport in a week and you'll get a free £10 bet then next week. TNC Supply, 80 plus, 
Right then, uh, the main action in terms of quality and indeed betting interest on Sunday is at Chanty. It's the Prix de Diane, or the French Oaks, as we say over here. And um, Tom Nugent, how do Paddy Power bet on this one? Yeah, we're non runner, no bet here, Bruce. Shanaz is our 3 to 1 favourite, happily 100 to 30 next in. Musis Amica, 11 to 2, 13 to 2 with you. 7 to 2, uh, 7 to 1 rather, Lauren's Luminate, 8 to 1, and it's 14 to 1 bar. Now, if you listen to our legendary Royal Ascot Anti Post podcast, which is still available, do check that out, you will have heard Frank Hickey, the legend from Power Towers, throwing in a pre Ascot tip that he said you had. Had to get involved with and it's the favourite. What's she called again? Shana- Shana- Shanaza. Shanaza. He thinks this will win the Prix de Diane in a hack canter and then go on to win the Arc, which is about 20 to 1. Uh, Brennan Duke, do you agree with Frank the Tank or are you going to take another one? Oh, well, I'm going to tip happily because uh, she's happily an, an, an equine crush of, of mine. She's a gorgeous filly and she does look ready for a step up and trip. But Frank will be getting very jiggy if she, Shanaza does win this because this looks a right heat. So if she can go and dot up here, three or all fillies in the arc, I mean, she's going to be into something like a seven or eight to one shot. So, uh, yeah, it's, it really looks a cracking heat. But you're sticking with your lovely happily, yeah? Yeah. Uh, Tom Park, who are you going to go for? Yeah, I've got a big love in this race as well, and that's Lawrence. I absolutely love this filly. Um, she's got the heart of a lion. Um, she's an absolute superstar. Uh, I think 7 to 1 a fair price. Um, I think she was the horse to take from the 1,000 guineas. Certainly think she'd win it more times than she would have lost. Um, I agree with Happily. The step up and trip will certainly help her, but Lawrence beat her fair and square in the 1,000 guineas. Um, and I think she's still un- a bit underrated, even though she won a Group 1 last okay. time in France. Tom Nugent, can you completely muddy the waters by throwing a fourth one in? No, I always find it's just easier to listen to Frank Hickey. So I've actually, I've, I haven't even had a bet in the race. I've just backed her for the arc each way. Okay. <laughs> okay, aside from Sean T, we've got Doncaster and Salisbury, plus over in Ireland, Cork and Down Patrick. Tom Park has shouldered arms at this stuff. He's not interested. He just wants to get into Royal Ascot. Boys, have you got anything on the Irish fair that we need to be backing on Sunday? We'll start with you, Brennan Duke. Yes, I had a very quick look. Uh, well, as quick a look as you can have with 24-hour decks, but we won't get into that. Uh, but, uh, the Monster Oaks looks a good race. Bloomfield uh, will be uh, pretty high up in the betting, and rightly so. She's a likeable progressive filly. But I just can't get away from this Jager. Uh, who I had uh, one of my uh, bigger bets of, of, of the year on when she was beaten by Bye Bye Baby in the Curra. I was disappointed that she got beaten, but it's still a pretty good run and was a big step up on her debut. And she's a beautiful mover, this filly. The better ground could be the making of her. And I still think she's potentially top class. And I think she'll win the Munster Oaks. And the Cork Derby, which is a handicap, um, Le Vagabond uh, ran really well in Leopardstown behind another tomorrow's runner, See the Line. I think he was undone by a slow early gallop that day. He's not an easy horse to win with, but you should get a reasonable price about him, and he definitely has the ability to win off that mark. And Tom Nugent? Yeah, uh, Jaeger was the one for me as well in the in the Monster Oaks. Uh, thought she'd improve for the better ground. Only raced it twice, and she'll surely take a step forward. Be very interesting to see what price she goes up with first show. Uh, if you fancy uh, Bloomfield, um, uh, the bet glamorous approach the last twice, uh, she's in the race for Belly Lynch as well. Have a look at her each way, but it's Jaeger in the Monster Oaks 350 Cork. For Let's me. hope Jaeger doesn't bomb. Let's look at Royal Ascot then. Um, We've got postcasts every day next week, starting from Monday, and then we're on the course all week. So daily postcasts, don't miss them. But to whet the appetite and to get the uh, the knowledge out of our experts while they're here, we will get their best favourite, we'll get their worst favourite, and then we'll get the best long shot. So, so we'll start with the best solid bet, which is the one of, 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 the, of the, the horses that are ahead of their respective markets. is the safest wager. Tom Park. Well, I think... The cracksman is probably the banker of the meeting, but I won't be um, I won't be getting involved in that race. Um, look, I think that these scat daddies seem to improve ten pound every time they run. So the two that I'll be backing pretty heavily this week will be Lady Aurelia and Saw Nation in the Commonwealth Cup. Um, Lady Aurelia, she's been there twice. She's done it twice impressively. As I said, she seems to just run miles better than Ascot than she does anywhere else. She beat Batash at York. I know Batash got worked up before the race, but, you know, this is Royal Ascot. He could do exactly the same again. And even if he doesn't, he's still 
got to prove it against Lady Aurelia. She's the best sprinter we've seen for some time, I think, um, in in this in the King Stand, um, and I think that she'll take all, the awful lot of beating, as will Saw Nation for the same reasons. By Scat Daddy, beat Royal Ascot, won there. I know Equilateral was impressive on his on it, 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 Doncaster the other start, um, in it, but that was just a novice event. Saw Nation's a Group One winner. He's won at Royal Ascot. He seems to just tick every box. I, I, I'm quite keen on him as well. Two solid favourites from Tom. How many from you, Brendan Duke? Um, I think the most solid favourite is Fairyland in the Albany. I think she'll win. I think the most vulnerable favourite is the Double OSG in the in the Gold Cup. Um, you've got he'll be the, hearing his hooves the, rattle, won't he? Exactly. The race could get tactical, and you've got some serious oppo here. I mean, this is a right renewal of the race. So I thought a two to one. Uh, it pains me to take him on because he's a warrior of the turf, but I, I think a two to one he looks short. And the best long shot. Would you let me put a ten to one shot up as a long shot? Yeah, definitely. That's a long shot in most people's eyes. Yes. Uh, it, it, quite right. You wouldn't get it at the bank, Bruce. Uh, so I was looking at Nelson who Aidan O'Brien has confirmed for the Queen's Vaz. This horse is uh, by Frankel out of uh, Moonstone. So just the, the stamina laden pedigree. He did run disappointingly in the Darren's Town, but it's the only time he's run badly. And I think you can forgive a horse a bad run. The favourite is Southern France, who won a Mickey Mouse list of the race the last day. Now, granted, he, he, he could progress. But Nelson is 10 to 1 with Paddy Power. That he cannot go off the colour of 10 to 1. I wouldn't be shocked if Ryan Moore rode him. And uh, 10 to 1 for the Queen's Vaz looks a big price to me. If horses learnt to talk or write, he'd be a good one to have a weekly uh, newspaper page, wouldn't he? To, uh, just telling us all about his career and his racing. But I don't know what we'd call it. <laughs> <laughs> Tumbleweed there. <Very> uh, <laughs> Tom Nugent now. Brennan's thrown me slightly. I, I do suffer yeah. badly from OD, OCD when I'm presenting this. So I thought we were going to do all the all the good favourites, then all the weak favourites, then all the long shots. So yeah, well, I, I think, I think we'll told. go with I think we'll go with you for all three. So I'm going to tee you up. Best favourite. Uh, my best favourite is Sergey Prokofiev. Pro pro no, no. Sorry, Prokofiev, <laughs> not pro not the other one. Uh, Prokofiev in the Coventry at five to two. Uh, think uh, he is a very, very good horse. Uh, bolted up in the Rogers Town in Nace the last day, and I think five to two is more than fair to Mr. Park's point about the Scat Daddies at Ascot. He ticks all the boxes, and uh, I think he's a very, very good horse. And I think he'll be an even better three-year-old. Your worst favourite? Uh, worst favourite. Two of them uh, without parole at eleven to four and James oh, Palace. Yeah, I that, think it's oh, an absolute oh, stinker. Oh. Um, and if you if you're still crab and romanized uh, and you think the Irish Guineas was a fluke, well, his two year old form has only been franked by Mass Arwin in the Derby. I am so, all uh, over romanized for that. Don't worry about that. So uh, without parole and the other one. I'd look at Wesley Ward brings over some good horses, no doubt, absolutely no doubt. But they are over bet now in Ascot, and the one that's over bet for me is Chelsea Cloister in the Queen Mary. I think Shades of Blue is going to beat her. Uh, Shades of Blue won a good Ascot race uh, the last day, and the second there, Queen of Bermuda has come out and won twice, and the third, come on, Leicester has come out and won uh, next time as well. And um, so I think Shades of Blue is going to beat an over bet Chelsea Cloister in the Queen Mary. And your long shot. Uh, struggled here, so this is a little bit le left field. Um, but I, I, I'm obsessed with a horse called Mab's Cross, who's entered in the King Stand, uh, sixteen to one puck. Now, on ratings, hasn't a hope. Has and like literally no chance. I think he's rated one oh nine or something. Lady Aurelia is one twenty something. Um, he missed the kick in Haydock Hay the last day, but still finished fourth. Um, Mabs Cross. Um, his seven starts before that, he's ran. He hasn't missed the frame. Uh, he's won five of those starts now, albeit in a lower grade. But I think if you get catch those sprinters when they're running really well. They can, they can never be far away, and it doesn't take that much improvement for a sprinter to reach Group 1 company. Um, so I think Mabs cross each way at 16-1 to 1 in the King's Stand for an absolute flyer. Now, Tom, you're probably sitting there thinking, hang on a sec, it's all gone to pot with Brendan doing all the strength. Is he going to come back to me for my worst favourite and my best long shot? Yes, I am. What are they? Well, my worst favourites have already been said, without parole and Order of St. George. Um, that Gold Cup's one of the races of the meeting. Um, all we needed was the big orange, and, and it would be well, the yeah, race I mean, of the ages. But it's still good, isn't it? Oh, absolutely! And I'm. I'm Who are you going to take the uh, double OSG on with? I like Vizirabad. Okay. Um, big fan of Vizirabad. He's a winning machine. Um, he's he gets keeps you on your toes when he hits the front, mind you. But um, 
yeah, I, I like I like Vizier about. And who's your long shot, Tom? Well, I'm not convinced these milers are up to much. So I'd be again. I'm quite keen to take Rhododendron on if Lord Glitters runs in the Queen Anne. He's entered in the Royal Hunt Cup as well. Um, I'd be I'd be quite keen to, to take him on each to back him each way. Um, he's he was brilliant on Champions Day. And he, he's in between now, handicap and group company. But I, I've said about the Ascot form. I think it it makes a big difference. And I just think that that race is open up for a shot. Rhododendron, everything went right for her in the lockinge, and she's still only won by a head. Um, if Ben Battle runs, it, then I think he should be the favourite, really. Um, but yeah, I think Log Glitters is interesting. OK. Brendan Duke, last word with you. It's a very funny first day, this, isn't it? Because the Queen Anne and St James's Palace, are, they, they're kind of like the lockinge the other week, aren't they? They're, they're, they're almost like sort of handicaps in terms of the betting shape, aren't they? Very much so, yeah. So uh, if we can find a couple of winners, we'll be uh, we'll have the arse knocked out of the week if we if we can manage that. Um, so that's basically uh, what I'm hoping to do. And you're the man in form. This is your favourite week of the year, isn't it, racing wise? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really really looking forward to it. What do you do? Just sit in front of the telly and, and punt and uh, and marvel, or or do you convene in a hostelry for it? Uh, no, I usually just I usually just sit at home. But uh, if someone's going out, I'll uh, I'll happily go out. It, it tends to be that you get these trips to the Dame Tavern. They tend to be around Cheltenham. Uh, Royal Ascot doesn't resonate in, in Ireland quite the same way. So, but I, if I if I hear someone going out for high tea or or, or whatever one does for uh, Ascot, I, I'll, I'll pop along. And Parky, are you there at all next week? Or yeah, I've got it in the office. I'm going on the Tuesday. Lovely. Um, and then I'm actually away for a friend's birthday in Belfast on the Friday and Saturday. So we'll have to find somewhere that's showing the football, oh. the racing, the rugby, everything. Excellent. Well, you'll be, you'll be flying the opposite direction to Tom Nugent because you're heading towards Ascot for the latter part of the week, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, going to hit Ascot like a hurricane on Saturday uh, oh. and uh, going to uh, really, really, really looking forward to go every year on the Saturday and sadly won't make it during the week this year, but uh, no, looking forward to a good day out. Uh, going to don the top hat and tails and everything, Bruce. Oh, goodness me. Good luck to you. I hope the weather's not too hot for you. Just time for me to pass on a tip that I got from a very good judge today that you should be backing Michael Holford's salt on stall in the Hunt Cup. Good luck over the weekend. Good luck at Ascot. Like I say, we're back with daily postcards from Monday right through the week and if you do enjoy these shows please do rate, review and subscribe on YouTunes YouTunes? That's a new one <laughs> iCloud <laughs> yeah, YouTube Sound, SoundCloud or iTunes. Have a great weekend Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat The username is the Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs the weather or the gym